So I would first of all, I would like to thank the United uh, Research Forum for inviting me for uh, presenting my talk on evolution of nutrition and food science in the country. So uh, just uh, before I start, I would like to give you a brief introduction about uh, who, who I am. So um, my name is uh, Saima Khurshid and I am currently working as an assistant professor at University of North Texas. Uh, I uh, teach the earth science and environmental science, and I have a PhD in um, agriculture with my specialization in soil science. So thank you so much once again for inviting, and let's get started with uh, today's talk. I will be talking about the evolution of nutrition and food science in the country. So before I get started, I would like to give a brief introduction about the nutrition and food science. So as we all know that your body, it needs to stay healthy and the key thing for health is the nutrition. So nutrition, nourishment, or we can say the ailment, it actually refers to the nurturing of our body to keep it healthy and functioning as it's supposed to do. But nature in uh, general has provided a variety of foods for man to consume and be healthy. So we consume the food for health, growth, and develop greater resistance against the diseases or infections. So nutrition as a science was actually founded by the Weiser, that's the father of chemistry and also the father of nutrition towards the end of 18th century. The science of nutrition, as we all know, is one of the youngest of the science. So food science, if we talk about, is the basic science and applied science of food. And its scope starts uh, overlapping with some agriculture science and nutrition. And it uh, then leads through the scientific aspects of food safety and food processing, informing the development of food technology. So the Institute of Food Technologies uh, technologists, they define the food science as the discipline in which the engineering, the biological and physical sciences, they are all combined together to study the nature of foods, what we are eating, the causes of deterioration, the principles that uh, underlie food processing and the improvement of foods for the consuming public. There are different kinds of uh, the different classes of nutrients. Uh, that's the we have six different kinds of nutrients in foods. That's the proteins, carbohydrates, minerals, vitamins, fats, and of course, the water. So let's now talk about the evolution of nutrition. So nutrition has come a long way or many years to the point where it's finally starting to get the attention. So it deserves in terms of its ability to determine if a person can achieve a good health and avoid the chronic diseases and premature death. So if we go back to the history around 400 BC, the Greek scientist Hippocrates, they gave food a lofty goal when he, uh, when he proclaimed. So there was a saying that let, uh, let the food be the medicine and medicine be the food. So it has taken over 2,400 years for that famous quote that was quoted to be taken seriously and the journey so especially over the past 100 uh, plus years, it's worthy of examination. So if we can appreciate uh, how we arrived out of our current understanding about the importance of food, perhaps we can better understand that how we can best continue this journey of exploration or education, or we can say the health improvement. Let me give you some uh, information about the early farming practices that we were uh, using that uh, were used in the early centuries. So about 10,000 years ago, farming began to take the place of hunting and gathering as the primary source of food for many people. So planting crops allowed the farmers to begin to make changes in the variety of plants that were grown as well as to experiment with in interbreeding to create more productive hybrids. So almost immediately the farmers, they began to create the hybrids that were more sweeter in order to accommodate human taste preferences with the negative consequences of food becoming the less nutrient dense. So monocultivation, it was one of, that means the one crop per area was grown also contributed to the gradual reduction in the nutrient levels in the soil. 
So while nowadays you can see we are adopting the crop rotation, that's the best management practices right, right now, the uh, most intensive practices that we are using right now and better fertilization were in, eventually introduced. So the concept of growing as much as possible at the lowest possible cost was firmly established as we had to feed a large number of population. So with the introduction of chemicals, we can say like pesticides and synthetic fertilizers, this concentration on productivity and profitability took on a heightened level of importance. Here in this picture, you can see the early farming practice that how the blocks uh, they have been used for uh, plowing in the fields, the rice fields. So continuing the early farming practices, you can see here in this uh, picture that these are an early 1920s view of farmers in the county Mayo using a, they are using a willow van to twist the straw into the coarse rope for eventual use binding the tops of those hay stakes. So a traditional craft, the bales would often contain about 50 feet rope. So originally this you can see here in the picture. Here is some, uh, one more picture from a Japanese farmer in a rice field. He's packing the rice in the straw bags. Let me now talk about the changing concept of uh, this nutrition. So we have the essential nutrients, like I already mentioned, the proteins, fats, and carbohydrates that have been recognized in the early 19th century. So during recent years, the science of nutrition has extended to nutritional epidemiology. The old concept of health sector that's alone the responsible for all nutritional problems, it's now realized that a broad multifactorial and integrated approach of sectors is uh, essential to solve today's uh, nutritional problems. The main objectives of, uh, there are some national health policies and the main uh, objective of those national health policies are the promotion of proper nutritional status of individual families, the prevention of uh, nutritional deficient, deficiency disorders or maintenance of the health of the individuals. One more thing I wanna add here is that the science of nutrition was extended to other fields like uh, the agriculture, animal husbandry or economics and sociology which actually led to the green revolution and white revolution and increased the food production uh, for feeding the increasing uh, number of population. Here's an overview of uh, certain historical milestones in uh, nutrition. So in pre-agricultural era, we can say that entire mankind it consumed uh, meat as early man was a hunter. So possibly he ate from the plant sources which grow in those wild areas. So with the advent of agriculture as an outcome of civilization, uh, the humans, the man, it occurred the ability to cultivate what he wanted. So as by now he was influenced to some extent by the selection of the food that he wanted to eat. So there is a great book, the Bible book of Daniel, which was captured by the king of Babylon and he had to serve in the king's court. So Daniel objected to being fed the fine food and wine saying that he preferred the vegetables, pulses or water. So the chief steward, it reluctantly agreed to a trial comparing those Daniel's uh, dietary preferences to those of the court of the king of Babylon. So for 10 days, Daniel and his man had their vegetation, uh, vegetarian diet while the king's men had theirs. So the trial revealed that Daniel and his men were healthier and fitter. So they were allowed to carry on with their diet. In 400 BC, the foods were often used as cosmetics in the treatment of arms. So one story describes the treatment of like eye diseases, now known to be uh, due to vitamin A deficiency by squeezing the juice of liver onto the eye. So vitamin A is stored in large amounts in the liver. In 1500 BC, the scientists and artists like Leonardo da Vinci, he compared the process of those metabolism of uh, body to the burning of a candle. Of course, there is a relationship between the nutrition and health. 
because it's related to the achievement of optimal growth and development that reflects the full expression of one's uh, genetic potential. So one more factor is, uh, is the maintenance of structural integrity and functional efficiency of body tissues that are necessary for an active and productive use and is also related to the mental well-being. So whatever we eat, it, it is actually related to the mental well-being, the physical strength, the maintenance of structural integrity, and also, of course, the ability to withstand the inevitable processes of aging with minimal disability and functional impairment. It's also related to the ability to combat the diseases and also resisting the infections. That means it uh, helps in the immunocompetence. So preventing the onset of degenerative diseases is also related to that and resisting the effect of environmental toxins or pollutants that we inhale on our daily basis. Let's now talk about the food science. So what actually is the food science? Food science is a convenient name that's used to describe the application of scientific principles to create and maintain a wholesome food supply. So as we all know that just as society has evolved over time, our food system has also evolved over centuries into a global system of immense size and complexity. The commitment of food science and technology professionals to advancing the science of food, ensuring the safe and abundant food supply, and it's also contributed to the healthier people everywhere, which is an integral part to that evolution. There are certain food scientists and technologists that are versatile, indisciplinary, and collaborative practitioners in a profession. And uh, they are at the crossroads of scientific and technological developments. So as we know that as the food system has drastically changed from one centered around family food production on individual farms, there is a good relation between the food science has given us that's the because of the food science, we have the frozen foods, we have canned foods, we have the microwave meals. We have a lot of uh, processed foods also because of the food processing technologies. So milk, which keeps those, uh, the snacks, the nutritious new foods we have and easily prepared traditional foods also. So when we talk about the food scientists, they help actually supply this bounty by learning to apply a wide range of scientific knowledge to maintain a high quality. So food science actually allows us to make the best use of our food resources and minimize the waste. So most food materials, if we talk about, they are of biological origin. So how they behave in harvesting, because there are a lot of processes so when the food is on our table, so it undergoes a lot of processing, like the harvesting, processing, the distribution, storage, preparation, which is a complex problem. So full awareness of all those important aspects of the problem, it requires a broad-based training. So in short, we can say that to be a food scientist and help handle the world's food supply to maximum advantage, you need some familiarity with the uh, chemistry, microbiology or biochemistry or with this special training in food science, there are certain many exciting and productive careers with a wide range of employment opportunities. Let me now talk about certain prog programs that are run by the federal and private agencies in order to feed the world. So USDA, that's the United States Department of Agriculture, it's responsible for providing a safety net for millions of Americans who are food insecure and for developing and promoting various dietary guidance based on scientific evidence. So United States Department of Agriculture is uh, actually works to increase that food security and reduce the hunger by providing children and low income people access to the food, a healthy diet and nutrition education in a way that supports the American agriculture and also inspires the public awareness. So USDA provides critical nutrition assistance through food and nutrition services programs. So one of them is the USDA food pyramid and uh, one more that we'll be talking about is the SNAP. So there are certain child nutrition programs also that are, uh, that are administered by the food and nutrition science. 
that provide the healthy food to children through the programs that include the national school lunch program, the school breakfast program, child and adult care food programs, and summer food service programs. So what actually happens during summer months, the USDA, it works with the community sponsors to serve millions of meals to low income children through the summer food service program. So this program actually helps to fight the hunger and obesity by reimbursing those organizations such as the schools, the child care centers and after school programs. So here you can see a snapshot of uh, the SNAP program. This project is involved both the uh, under design and creation of multiple materials that aim to simplify or clarify the way the supplemental nutrition assistance program, that's the SNAP, which is presented to the public. So it took over a year to complete all of the various aspects of the project. So formally, this SNAP program is also known as the food stamp program. It serves as a primary source of nutrition assistance for millions of low income people the, uh, monthly. So it increases the food purchasing power for, uh, to eligible households with the benefits that can be used to buy the food at the authorized retail grocery stores. State agencies, they operate this SNAP program according to the national eligibility and benefit standards. Uh, certain, which are set by a certain federal laws and regulations. There are certain uh, implement strategies also that promote the healthy choices and prevent the obesity among the participants that provide the employment and training services. It also helps the part participants to move to self-sufficiency and is responsible for ensuring the integrity in certification and benefit issuance. Let's not you know, talk about the, another program that's, the new, uh, that's led by the New York State Office of Temporary and Disability Assistance. It was implemented, uh, that's the agency that has uh, implemented the New York State Nutrition Improvement Project. Uh, it was implemented in 2003. The main goal is to automatically uh, enroll all of the New York State's the, uh, supplemental security income live, live alone recipients into the supplemental nutrition assistant program. We have certain uh, stages of nutrition. Uh, let me talk about them one by one. Talking about the optimal nutrition, the term optimal nutrition, it can be defined as eating the right amounts of nutrients on a proper schedule to achieve the best performance and the longest possible lifetime in good health. So assuming that external negative influences like uh, accidents and infectious diseases, they can be avoided. Malnutrition is a broad term which refers to the undernutrition or overnutrition. So individuals are malnutrition nourished or they suffer from undernutrition if their diet doesn't provide them with adequate calories or proteins for maintenance and growth, or they cannot fully utilize the food, what they eat uh, due to the illness. So malnutrition is because uh, they have the uh, la uh, lack of access to sanitation, lack of fresh water, or which actually leads to the starvation and um, finally to the malnutrition. So overnutrition is frequent or habitual overconsumption of nutrients. If we eat too much of food to the point that it becomes dangerous for the health. And talking about the undernutrition, the undernutrition is the opposite of overnutrition. So meaning that it's a nutrient deficiency from not eating the enough food. Here are some of the determinants or the factors that affect the food and nutrition of an individual. Uh, when we talk about the food and nutrition, it is, as we already mentioned, that it's related to the development of uh, the mental, uh, mental activity, the physical development. It also depends upon the gender, the genetics, beliefs about the food, the experience, personal preferences, nutritional habits, that means whatever habits we have, some, sometimes some persons, they are just uh, more dependent on the processed foods. So that affects that what nutritional habits we have, the quality of food, the quantity of food, the efficiency of our digestive system, because everyone's system is different. So 
Biochemical availability is also one of the factors that affect the food and nutrition of an individual. So concluding today's talk, I can say that building on the evidence for multifaceted effects of different foods, processing methods, and diet patterns, there are new priorities for research that are emerging in nutritional science. These include the optimal dietary composition to reduce the weight gain and obesity. We have certain interactions between the pro, uh, probiotics and prebiotics, some fermented foods and gut microbiota, effects of uh, some specific fatty acids, some flavonoids and other bioactives. We have certain uh, personalized, uh, personalized nutrition also. So our understanding of diet that's related to the biological pathways, it will continue to expand the highlighting limitations of using those uh, single surrogate outcomes to determine the full health effects of any dietary factor. So our modern food system, it's very complex and uh, changes continuously in time and space. So during the past century, like I already discussed, the food processing evolved to make food the basis of a healthy civilization. They help society overcome the hunger and improve the safety nutrition, convenience, and affordability, and availability of foods. So food processing, it has also changed over time, the perception of uh, foods and beverages. So through food science and technology, the knowledge of many disciplines is applied to transform those raw food materials and ingredients into consumable foods that are available year round. We have certain advances in agriculture and food science technology that have provided the uh, reduction in nutrition deficiency related diseases. There are enhanced food safety and consistent quality. They have decreased the uh, home food preparation time, a uh, large variety of delicious food choices. They have reduced the food waste, lower household food costs than ever before. Uh, we have certain food and meal convenience options. There are certain products that are specifically formulated to meet the nutritional needs. So thank you so much for your time.